G'day! In today's video I'm going to be talking about this gaming desktop that's sitting right beside me. It did originally start its life out as a gaming laptop, but the laptop days were over and its portability was no longer valid. So because of that I thought I'd use a bit of a, an idea that originally started from Brian at Tech yes City regarding using a gaming laptop as a desktop. But I thought I'd go one step further and convert it into a desktop itself. So, looking on eBay one day, and popped up for $320 Australian, including postage. A hardware of it's a i7-9750H, 16GB of RAM, 500GB NVMe, and also a GTX 1650 4GB model. Which that there is probably the Achilles heel of this particular computer, as that does limit it in gaming considerably. But also if gaming prices are as they are currently, it's still a not bad purchase for 320 Australian dollars. From there I proceeded to spend another roughly about $80 on it, but then I also sold the usable screen on there for 100. So in the end, in its current form, it still probably cost me only about 300 Australian dollars after selling the spare parts that I salvaged off the broken laptop. With it, I was able to use a arcade power button on there to be able to get it to power up once more. So I unsoldered the little push button that was already on the motherboard and sold it on an arcade button. That functions just perfectly fine. It does have a satisfying click when you go to start the machine. Also, I did have to require 12 volt to be able to power the fans. But then I also require 5 volt to power the RGB aspect of those fans. So from there I was able to get a, it was a, a voltage regulator designed for an Arduino. And from there you can basically step the voltage between a, quite a few different ranges. So I was able to tap in directly to the 19 volt on the power cable where it meets the main board. And go to the Arduino to then drop it down to 12. And from there that's able to power the fans. One disadvantage with that though that I found was as soon as the power cable is plugged in, those fans start spinning even if the machine's not powered on. So it is getting that power directly bypassing the main board. Also tapping in and finding a five volt or a five volts on the board that I found that was actually suitable, I ended up using one of the five volt powers on a USB port to get that. Granted the USB ports, I'm not expecting too much traffic on them as most things on here will be able to connect, be connected wirelessly either via Bluetooth or just use a single wireless a uh, wireless keyboard and mouse and use it from there. Another issue I did discover with it as I was troubleshooting it initially was that when I connected up the HDMI out without a screen connected I would get a constant blinking orange light which apparently on Dell's means no internal video. So it was trying to display via the internal display and since it couldn't it would produce this blinking light which a blinking light on there is not overly handy. So I did end up just unsoldering that and taking that LED off. Same with the voltage regulator. When it was on, it had a very solid blue light. And that was, wasn't really necessary, so I also unsoldered that off the board. I found with it the fans. I ended up getting some 5mm uh, acrylic clear plastic. Bought that from Bunnings. And proceeded to also buy a couple of other tools to be able to cut out the 12 centimeter circles. Also found with it that the acrylic itself will get dusty quite quickly. At this point in time it looks pretty good, but give it another six months, three months, two months of use, time will tell how well it will look there. But looking at it sitting on a bench, you look at it and think it's either an external GPU or some weird little crazy graphics card, but in reality it's a whole computer. So overall the performance of it has been fine. I found that even just idling at a desktop and light web browsing, the system fans or the laptop's built-in fans don't even actually turn on. So there's enough passive air going over it just from the three 12 centimeter aero cool fans on there that they function just fine. With it as well, I end up using the aero cool duo 12 pro and its internal RGB control. And from there, it does have an external remote that I can use to change the, the patterns on the light. So you can tweak it to whatever you prefer. But overall, gaming performance on there hasn't been too bad as well. I've been loading up Cyberpunk 2077 on there just as a bit of a test. Uh, it's only been running at 720p just due to the monitor that I've got it connected on. But overall, frame rate seems to be anywhere between about 40 to 60 FPS at medium graphics, which surprisingly isn't too bad. Also, the audio acoustics of it, since 
the fans are mostly pushing into it and up. I find that as compared to this being in laptop form, the fans would be considerably louder in a laptop form blasting the air out the back, where right now it's blasting the air directly up to the roof. So I find because of that, you're not really noticing the noise as much. So cooling and performance seems to be pretty much the maximum that this board will ever be able to obtain. Granted, different cooling may help. I also toyed with the idea of going for stock Intel cooler on there and somehow mounting that onto the existing copper pipes, but that would have made it quite a bit more chunky from there. I found a few things that would have made it slightly better is if I had access to a, a CNC machine, which I could have got one, but it was, yeah, I didn't want, to, didn't really want to go down that path at this point in time. But if you have access to a CNC machine, you can make your own essentially plans to cut it. The finish of it would be considerably better. I mean, this is quite rough, quite rugged. It was using a jigsaw at home to cut it. Or, and yes, yeah, a couple of drill bits from there. But it does definitely look like a rather unique machine, which was the, the overall idea of this project, was to have something that looks com completely different to what it originally started as. It certainly doesn't look like an old Dell G3 laptop nowadays. It's definitely changed from this to that. So overall, it's been a fun little project. I started to get a bit started to get a little bit challenging here and there for certain aspects of it, mainly just the, the cutting of the perspex. That was probably the biggest challenge for me where soldering on was straightforward or soldering various wires and whatnot. So it's been a fun project, but that will do for today. So hope you enjoy. And I've certainly had fun doing it and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.